Welcome to the final part of our three-part series where we're celebrating the football season by designing and printing a custom kicker's tee. We've used a combination of surfacing tools and essential modeling tools to get to this point. And now let's add some simple extruded ribs to the support pillars and feet. And we'll recess the SolidWorks logo into the side of the part before showing you the final 3D printed part. Let's start by sketching on the top plane to create a reference line for another reference plane. I want it to run through the center of this football support pillar. So exit the sketch, and with the sketch still highlighted, navigate to Reference Geometry Plane, then select the top plane or this bottom surface to make this new plane perpendicular to. Sketching on this new plane, I'm just going to create a few triangular ribs to strengthen the support pillar and feet. I'm going to go ahead and sketch both ribs in a single sketch and show you in the Extruded Boss tool how you can use a single sketch for different extrusions. Exit the sketch and enter the Extruded Boss tool. We'll start with the Football Support Pillar rib, so in the Extruded Boss Property Manager, find this selected contours area, and in the graphic area, select the portion of the sketch you'd like to extrude. And I'll extrude this rib on the mid-plane 0.175 inches. And we can repeat that for the foot rib, this time extruding it to 0.35 inches thick on the mid-plane. Let's go ahead and soften these ribs up with some fillets. I'll set the fillet to 0 0.0875 inches and select the four edges to fill it. And here I'm going to select the multi-radius fillet option. As you'll see, a little edit box pops up for each fillet, allowing you to designate a radius dimension for each selected edge. This allows you to consolidate multiple radius fillets into a single operation. Now let's sketch on the right plane and create a similar rib for the front foot, again extruding it on the mid plane to 0.35 inches thick. And I'll soften this rib as well with a 0.175 inch fillet. Now let's mirror the first two ribs we created. Select the right plane and enter the mirror function found in the command manager. Navigate to features to mirror and in the graphics area select the two ribs as well as their fillets to mirror them to the other side. Then we can add the final fillets around these rib areas set to a 0.05 inch radius. So there we have our kicker's T model, but I want to be able to add a bit of color to the 3D printed part, so I'm going to add a heavily recessed logo to each side of the part. Sketching on the right plane, navigate to Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture, and I'll select an image that I'll be sketching over. As you'll see, this image just comes in as a black box. This can happen if you're importing a PNG image with a transparent background. So under Transparency in the Sketch Picture Property Manager, select the From File option to fix this issue. And I'm just changing the orientation, size, and location of this logo. You can do this visually, or you can fine tune the size and location with specific dimensions in the Property Manager. So with the image in place, I'm just going to work through sketching around the characters with a series of lines, splines, and arcs. So here we have our full logo sketch. 
Exit the sketch and let's navigate to the extruded cut tool. In the property manager under from, select surface face plane and select the right outer surface to cut into. Just keep an eye on the direction of the cut and we'll set this cut to 0.04 inches. Now I want to add this logo to the other side of the part as well. Mirroring this isn't an option because it would end up reading backwards on the other side, but I don't want to go through the extra work of resketching every character of the logo in the proper direction for the other side. So to me, the quickest way to get this done is to create a new sketch on the right plane with the first logo sketch unhidden. We'll use the Convert Entities tool to convert the logo over to the active sketch, and I'm going to create a few construction lines to help determine the approximate center of this logo in the X direction and draw a vertical center line. Now we can simply mirror these sketch entities around this center line, making sure to turn off the copy option in the mirror property manager. And there we have our perfectly centered sketch now reading in the correct direction. Again, I'll create a 0.04 inch cut, this time on the other side of the part. So this creates a nice heavy well in the part. So to add a pop of color to the 3D print, I'm going to use a really cool technique that was discovered by our friends at Form Labs of melting wax crown into these recesses. We'll go with SolidWorks red color in the logo area, and I'm going to print this part in a high resolution SLA printer in a very durable polypropylene-like material, which has a sort of translucent white color. So I've run this through the printer, removed the support structures, and sanded around the logo areas, gradually moving from 220 grit to 600 grit sandpaper to get as smooth of a finish as possible. You wanna remove any remaining layer lines from the printing operation, as the melted wax will fall into the slightest recesses and be difficult to remove. I rated my son's crown collection and melted enough wax to cover the entire logo area. You can melt the wax using a few techniques, either with a heat gun, which I've found tends to blow the wax around too much and is difficult to control, or a more gentle approach is to simply use a lighter to melt the wax. But if this is a technique you think you'll use often, I'd suggest investing in my tool of choice, a wax pin. This is a tool that's primarily used in the jewelry industry in preparation for lost wax casting. It allows you to melt the wax into a heated tip and drop the wax into the desired areas, giving you the most control rather than sloppily placing droplets all over the face of the part. So with the melted wax in place, let it set for about 10 minutes before running over it with a scraper or exacto blade to remove the excess wax. And finally use some rubbing alcohol and a clean rag or Q-tips to do some final cleanup. Now with our part printed and a pop of color added to the logo area, we're ready for kickoff. All right, SolidWorks users, so we're gonna go kick the ball around a little bit, but just wanted to say thank you for watching this series. Hope you learned a thing or two about uh, surfacing techniques and some essential modeling techniques in SolidWorks, and that you have fun playing around with your 3D prints, adding a little pop of color using this unique wax technique. So Sam, you ready to kick the ball around? Hey, let me ask you, is football one of your favorite sports? Yes. How come? Because I like to bring the pain. You like to bring the pain? All right, let's see if you can inflict a little pain on this football. Let's okay. go. Down. Set. Hut. Oh! Oh! Oh, gosh. Daddy, why did I hit you? Oh, you hit me in the head. <laughs>